Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be doing a dab paint with a piece of corrugated plastic, and then we've got a we've got some blue, some red, and some white paint, all glass enamel, patriotic colors because I live in America, so the old red, white, and blue. Even though I know that other countries use those colors too, um, but anyway, today we're going to be doing the dabbed painting, and I don't know, we're not really gonna wait too much time we're gonna jump in however right before I jump in I want to show you this painting this one I did in the last video if you haven't seen that th that should have come out before this one this painting's okay um, but I realized kind of some issues that I had with it was I had too many little pockets of paint as opposed to a few big you know pockets of paint so we're gonna try to you know do better on that so we're gonna start with blue and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do two really big Kind of areas of blue and then just a little bit of kind of sprinklings of it throughout okay so we really want to kind of make these little pockets blue and then we're going to move into red and we're really going to kind of fill in this area with red because i think that the issue that i had was i just i had the paint kind of too spread out so it didn't really make the little puddles that i was trying to get so i'll, I'll put a little bit down here and a little bit over here and a little bit up here. Lastly, we'll do our, you know, white. And we're going to do kind of a big section of it here. And then a little bit here. Uh, another big section here. And another section there. 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 And there. And I really want to make sure that we have enough paint this time. But that, that's also another issue that I ran into was this simply wasn't enough paint. And sometimes, sometimes there's too much, sometimes there's not enough. So now that we've got that out of the way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of pull these colors out to just kind of fill in the, the areas. And we always start with the lightest color. So we move into the white. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start kind of pulling these out, right? And so I'm gonna use the white that's there but I'm also gonna start overlapping with some of these other colors. And so I'm gonna pull this white and then I'm gonna go up here to the empty spot. And then I'm gonna pull a bunch of this red and put it down in an empty spot. Pull a bunch of the blue, empty spot. And then a bunch of the red, empty spot. A bunch of the white, empty spot. A bunch of the red. And so I just kind of stamp the painting over and over again. Using the big pockets of, of paint into the the areas that are void of color and so we just kind of keep doing that over and over again to fill the painting and sometimes we just overlap the, the areas that do have paint because why not it's going to mix those colors it's going to kind of make it dynamic and that's what really makes these these paintings pop you know what i mean and i found that Balance is a huge issue with these types of paintings where if I don't use like white or black or both in these paintings Then they feel really flat. It's it's kind of interesting. I, I found that out yesterday when I made the uh, the purple one Okay, so we're gonna do that and speaking of purple the red and the blue are starting to mix So we're starting to get little pools of purple here All right, and we're gonna do that we're going to take these big puddles and we're starting to get to the point where we have only a few little gaps, but it makes these little awesome little stars. Okay, and I think we're good there. And we're just going to go through and kind of make sure that all of the, the painting is covered. It looks like most of it is, although using white, sometimes it's hard to tell what's the, uh, the paper and what is not. All right, and now we're starting to run into the issue where the colors are starting to combine. So we don't want the colors to combine too much or else we lose those distinct colors, okay? And I think we're good there. We've got a little bit of gap there. So we'll just, just tap the paint and kind of mix them. And then now I'm gonna flip it over. And anytime there's a gap, what I'll do is I'll use this side to kind of clear them or I'll just use my glove and touch it up and I think we're actually pretty good it looks like it's covered for the most part and we'll just kind of uh, 
fix those. Actually, let's see if we can pull a little bit of red in there. Okay, good. And that's pretty good. All right, so the whole painting is covered. Looks like everything is good now. Good, good, good. All right, so now, I mean, that's it. So the, the painting is done, guys. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use the heat gun. I don't like using it on these uh, glass enamel paintings just cause sometimes it cooks the paint, but I'll just have to hold it far away and, and for a decent amount of time. But that's it for the painting. It, it, super quick, super easy. It's like when you're intentional and you know what you're trying to do, it makes painting really easy. And I'm not saying that every painting is easy, but if you're trying to make abstract pieces and you know your methods, you know your materials, you know, when you when you do the same type of painting a, long, a lot of times, it makes it easier. So that's it, a quick one today. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just dry it with the, the heat gun, but I didn't wanna waste your time doing that. So that's the final piece. Hopefully, let me just show you some of the little star effects because they are awesome. Look at those little pools of color. But that's it, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.